The problem with steroids is that they work, like really work. That's probably irresponsible for me to say, but if we're going to talk about the steroid epidemic, we need to do it honestly. Here's a three week trend cycle update for you guys. Buying trend in Thailand. <laughs> steroids build muscle way faster than something like creatine. It's not even close. If you started taking five grams of creatine every day for a year straight, you'd add about two pounds of extra muscle. If you started taking steroids at a normal bodybuilding dose, you probably add about 20 pounds of extra muscle that year, but it could be more depending on your genetics and how much you take. I'm a lifetime natural bodybuilder, and these are my testosterone levels right now, 485 nanograms per deciliter. That's right around the middle of the normal range for someone my age. This is bodybuilder Chase Irons, the world's most honest enhanced bodybuilder. He also had blood work done this month. Where do you think his testosterone levels are? Maybe double mine or triple mine? Nope. His levels are literally off the charts. The test max is out at 10,000 nanograms per deciliter, and his testosterone was higher than that. He openly admits to taking a lot of gear, and this shows just how big the gap between natural and enhanced can get. More people are taking steroids now than ever before. Why is that? Well, I think it's because more and more fitness influencers are opening up about their anabolic use. In theory, this honesty is a good thing. That's because anyone watching would be able to adjust their own expectations for their goals. If they're natural and they know their favorite fitness influencer isn't, they'd be able to lower their own standards and say, okay, well, now I know that result isn't achievable for me. But this kind of backfired. A lot of people didn't lower their expectations, they just started taking steroids. And the bigger problem is a lot of fitness influencers are only ever partially transparent. They say they're on steroids and they show their gains, but they rarely, if ever, show any of the bad stuff. So the only logical conclusion is that steroids are amazing, but that's misleading. So to help you understand exactly what happens to your body when you take steroids, let's inject some juice together and see what happens next. Good and bad. This is testosterone and anthate. It's one of the most common forms of steroids that people take. It's basically just a testosterone molecule with a carboxyl group attached and dissolved in a vegetable oil so you can inject it. There's also some kind of aromatic compound like benzoyl benzoate in here, which prevents bacterial growth and helps the testosterone dissolve better. When you inject the needle into your muscle, a bubble of oil is squeezed in between the individual muscle fibers, which spreads out and forms this elongated shape. The testosterone molecules then slowly make their way into the bloodstream over the course of several hours. There, enzymes called esterases cleave off that carboxyl group and then the testosterone is carried by molecules called binding proteins to the muscle where it enters a single muscle cell. Now its job is to make that muscle cell bigger. And if that's all that steroids did, that'd be sweet and I'd be on them. But there's a lot more that happens. For one, your heart is also a muscle. So of course, the same thing happens there. The testosterone enters your heart cells and tells your DNA to make your heart bigger. Having a big heart sounds like a good thing, but it's really not. When your heart grows, especially one compartment called the left ventricle, the extra bulk actually makes it harder for your heart to squeeze and relax. This means your heart won't be able to pump blood as effectively, which increases your risk of heart failure. Now, I wanna say, I'm not the health police. You can do whatever you want with your own body, and I've got no problem with people who enhance. But I want people to at least be aware of exactly what you're doing and the full effect it has, good and bad. For example, not many people realize that steroids affect your brain. To explain this, I wanted to find someone with scientific education and first-hand experience with steroids. Hey. Can you hear me okay, Mike? Yeah, yeah. Steroids can cause in many people really high levels of anxiety. It's dose dependent. It's also compound dependent. Things like trend cause way more anxiety than other milder compounds like prehone. So this is fun. I haven't admitted this yet, but it's not a particularly crazy admission. Uh, I recently took a, a, a validated, empirically validated, scientifically based scale for anxiety. And actually currently right now, um, I have severe anxiety disorder. It's probably the most severe type of anxiety disorder, short of like panic disorder. And uh, that's actually right now, as I, as I talk, that's what I have. And uh, another one, uh, also another psychological side effect, some types of your intelligence degrade over time with steroid use. This was tested in people currently using steroids and people who used to use steroids. Most people are just totally unaware that steroids have that potential effect on IQ reduction. And since IQ or just intelligence is such a global quality that you probably want to hang out uh, to most of it as much as you have. It's a real serious thing to trade off. 
And that tracks with the science. This 2021 study took 3D MRI scans of the brains of over 200 weightlifters. About half of them were natty, the other half enhanced. The scans revealed that the lifters who took steroids had a significantly bigger brain age gap. That means when they looked at the natural brains, their brain age matched their actual age. But the brains of the enhanced lifters looked much older than they should look for someone their age. Their brains were aging faster than they should be. And the psychology of steroids is fascinating. Most people take steroids because they want to look bigger and feel better about the way they look. And I get it. I want to look bigger and feel better too. And steroids will make you look bigger, but they might not help you feel any better about the way you look. They actually could make your body dysmorphia worse. That's because a lot of people think if they just start enhancing, then they'll look how they want. But just because you take gear doesn't mean you're going to look like SIBA. And then when you eventually come off, you'll quickly lose a good chunk of the size that you put on and feel smaller than ever. At that point, it becomes near impossible not to go back on, take even more steroids, and the cycle continues. Again, that wouldn't really be a problem if steroids didn't impact pretty much every system in your body, but they do. After you inject, some of that testosterone is converted into a hormone called DHT, which causes hair follicles to shrink faster. This is why so many bodybuilders are bald in their 20s. Some testosterone is also converted into estrogen, which can increase breast tissue formation in men, leading to soft, puffy nipples, also known as gyno. The most reliable way to get rid of gyno is surgery, and while most people will take other drugs to prevent that conversion to estrogen, almost every bodybuilder you know has had to deal with gyno at some point. Injecting testosterone also lets your testicles know that there's more than enough testosterone to go around, so they shrink to about one half of their usual size. The shrinkage quickly shuts down your body's natural ability to make its own testosterone, which is why some people will need to inject testosterone for the rest of their life. Steroids also make sebaceous glands on your skin grow bigger, which causes them to overproduce a sticky, oily substance called sebum. Sebum moisturizes and protects your skin in normal amounts, but causes acne when overproduced. Now, steroid users will try to combat this by taking other drugs for acne treatment, but then they have their own side effects. What would be a side effect that um, most people like wouldn't be aware of until you've kind of done it? Yeah, it's a good question. There are a few of those I can think of. Because anabolic steroids are mostly gotten in, at least the United States uh, and Canada, through, through underground laboratories, some of the gear you get is like damn near farmer grade. It goes in smooth as butter, never does anything, no inflammation. Some of the gear goes in there and uh, boy, does it, uh, does it mess you up. And I have been personally hospitalized at least once for um, a non infected but insanely immune responsive abscess my quad was like half a foot out to one side i've had friends get hospitalized for abscesses the doctors have to cut your skin open they have to drain it and lastly the term roid rage but it's really aggression and it, it very infrequently displays itself as actual violent acts but the thoughts you get on steroids are disturbing you might like war movies and stuff but if there's a war movie playing in your head every single second you're awake and asleep it gets a little old after a while but you have big muscles so i guess that's cool so I tell the cookie crumbles. Let me get a second opinion on that. Hello, hello. Yo, yo. A pretty common reported anecdote is feeling like you just hit puberty again. For the first like six to eight weeks, it literally feels like you're 16 years old again. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> it's probably not a good thing overall because you're now an adult with the like libido of a raging 16 year old and you have responsibilities and things to keep up with and all you can think about is your perpetually erect penis basically which is not ideal um increased probability of injury this is sometimes talked about when your strength is skyrocketing your connective tissue cannot maintain the pace of your muscular strength and often this will lead to unnecessary injury in the gym because you know if your bench goes up 50 pounds in six weeks like you're not <laughs> typically you're not gonna like hold back you're gonna keep pushing because this weight feels like a feather now you're gonna you know go as far as it can take you but your connective tissue is not keeping up with that pace and this you'll see often bodybuilders that end up with uh, brutal injuries. It's hard to say how much steroids shorten your lifespan, but they definitely do. One 2024 paper followed over a thousand steroid users for 11 years with an average age of 27. During the same time frame, they also followed 60,000 people of the same age 
but not on steroids. 2.8% of the steroid users had died by the follow-up, while only 1% of the non-steroid users had died. That's a lot of excess deaths, which led the authors to note that the excess death rate in this young adult population is striking. Of course, this depends on the dose that you're taking. I think what a lot of people think is, I'm not gonna go crazy with the juice. Like I, I'm just gonna do a little like sports TRT or whatever, like 150, 200 milligrams uh, a week. How do you feel about that? I think the word TRT is very conflated with like baby cycle essentially at this point. When you're on TRT, even if it looks on paper like a normal total testosterone, it is not representative of what you could do naturally. So even if you're on like, you know, low dose TRT, on paper, you could define it as such, but it's certainly like, you're essentially on mini enhancement territory perpetually, which I'm not to say that that's bad, because that, that's almost like the boat I fall into myself, essentially. It's just a matter of managing the risk to reward on it, and if you feel it is worthwhile for yourself, consider it of all of the factors that underlie it. Would you say there is a healthy way to use steroids? Uh, there are, uh, so everything is a spectrum in this case. So there are healthier and less healthy ways. And if you want to use steroids in a healthier way, then what you're going to do is start with very small amounts of them, check your blood work, do various uh, heart scans and, and procedure, consult with a professional coach who does this for a living, have a medical doctor on, on retainer to make sure that you're getting uh, every several months or twice a year blood work. You check your blood pressure all the time. You cycle properly coming on and off. You take as little gear as will accomplish the effect you're interested in. If you do that, you can definitely do it healthier than not. But, you know, there are ways to race a car and design a race car and design the suit and the crumple zones that make it safer. But as soon as you pass 200 miles an hour, safer is the term. It's not safe. It was never safe. And so steroid use is less safe almost always than not taking steroids. But you can make it very, very safe or you can make it pretty roll the dice risky the real big decision on how you approach it. I notice people at like a really young age coming up to me and being like, hey, like I might hop on, like, you know, I've been training for a while now, like I, I, teenagers. Do you have like an age in mind where it's like, this is where, you know, you're old enough to even like consider it. And before that, just figure out your training and diet. Yeah, there's a couple things that go into that. One is some kinds of steroids close, uh, close your growth plates early. And uh, that means it'll prevent you from reaching an adult height. Some men don't stop growing until they're 22 years old. And uh, if you start taking it when you're 16, you're probably going to be a short king for much longer than you anticipate. Well, actually, a shorter king than you ended up uh, should have be become with your genetics. And, um, you know, to almost the same group of people to whom jacked uh, lifestyle is important, being as tall as possible is also important, seemingly. Another thing is the brain develops in very, very high level ways. Uh, well into your late 20s and then subtle ways through your entire lifespan. And so until about your mid 20s, I would say there's a high probability that uh, steroids will stunt your brain development to a significant extent. And so I would say my cutoff age generally is the conversation for responsible medically supervised steroid use for serious goals by a serious individual begins at age 25. The answer I usually give is like get at least 10 years of natural training under your belt because you'll have figured out what works for your body. And then from there, you know, you'll also by default be at least in your like mid twenties. You know, most people don't start lifting until they're at least, you know, in their mid teens. So, you know, it kind of ticks both of those boxes. And so, yeah, I, I always encourage people. It's like, have you been training hard and smart for 10 years? If not, then I don't think it's decision time for you yet. And I'll be honest, there have been several moments in my own bodybuilding career when enhancing has been very tempting, even now, especially with the fitness standards increasing rapidly and more and more fitness influencers juicing. And I think the standards have shifted so much since, you know, oh, we yeah. started out like six years ago, like I was in the natty or not conversation as a physique that's like <laughs> almost too good. And now six, six now years like, later, small, it's like, bro. it's like you're, you're the guy who doesn't lift, but knows you know? <laughs> but instead of enhancing, I've decided to do something different. I keep thinking, maybe I've reached my natural limit for muscle growth. But have I actually? Am I actually at my natty limit? Or have I just not been training as hard and smart as I could be? I wasn't going to reveal this, but this year I'm doing an experiment with McMaster University here in Canada to see how much muscle it's possible for me to build naturally this deep into my lifting journey. If I do everything perfectly, can I still make gains naturally? So for this entire year, I've been doing everything 100% perfectly in the gym. 
I'm tracking every single set, taking the last set of every exercise to true technical failure. I'm not skipping any sets or any workouts. I'm also committing 100% to my diet. I haven't missed a single day tracking in Macrofactor, and I've hit my calorie and protein goal every single day. Now, I'll be sharing my full results at the end of this year, but I can say that I've definitely made some solid gains already. This doesn't always show up as well on camera, but I've gotten more compliments about having put on some solid size at my local gym than I've gotten in years. But similar to me, what happens to a lot of guys is that they think they're at their natty limit and only steroids will help, when in reality, they're probably just not being as diligent with their training and their nutrition as they could be. Why not dial that up to 100% first? Then you can make that decision. That's how I feel anyway. And if you want to commit and join me on a year-long journey to truly dedicated lifting and eating, consider downloading my nutrition app, Macrofactor. You can try it for two weeks for free to see if you like it first, and it's really like having me as your own personal nutrition coach, but for a tiny, tiny fraction of the cost. We're about to hit 150,000 monthly users, which is pretty crazy, and we've gathered some incredible transformations from users of the app. Unlike other diet apps, Macrofactor uses science-based algorithms to tailor your calories and macros to your metabolism specifically. All you need to do is track your food and your weight, and the app will automatically update your nutrition each week. So I'll put a link to the free trial in the description box down below if you guys want to get started with me. And that's it for this one, guys. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.